Ah, oh, damn. I tried 180. Felt freaking amazing, man. Felt really, really good. And weights at home usually feel heavy. But for some reason this morning, I just felt really, really good. So once I saw 180 on the video and, you know, I felt it really nice. And when I feel it really nice, usually the video looks freaking amazing. And so putting those two things together, I thought, yeah, okay, let's give it a shot. Loaded 190, unracked it, felt good, felt strong. Went down with somewhat control. I felt like I was in my quads. I was in a good position. And then I got to the bottom. I tried to get out. And you can actually see, you can actually see the body thinking about it. So the quads were being overpowered. So my hips started, started shifting backwards in the attempt to go to something that you know, I'm really good at, which is the posterior chain. But of course, the, the front squad weren't allowed that. You know, for every millimeter that you shift your hips back, it's times 10 on the upper back. You just cannot uh, stabilize the weight on your shoulders if you're freaking 45 degrees inclining your body. So then I ended up uh, dropping it. I dropped it, uh, but I felt like I didn't get absolutely massacred with it. Uh, I had a conversation one night and that's, that's really impressive. I'm not in shape right now to feel strong. Uh, all my lifts, are, I don't know, like I, I haven't really hit anything impressive to me for quite some time. Um, but the fact that I can carry this much fatigue, you know, in the quads and the rest of me and also get close to a PI is really promising. Um, and what, what's most promising to me is the fact that my hips are feeling freaking fantastic. I feel really strong. That 190 didn't hurt a little bit. You know, in the past, I would hit PRs and I would feel a twinge in my hip or, you know, the side hip. You know, I would feel something like, you know, I've really pushed my body hard there. But now, you know, I'm doing 190 and I'm really, really going all out on it and not a single hint of discomfort, pain, nothing that, that would concern me. So I'm in a really good spot right now. This quad business that I'm doing is, is uh, it's heavy. It's a lot of work, but it seemed to be translating um, to the bar quite well. So even though I'm not peaked uh, for strength and to, to, to feel strong, uh, right now, I think it's a really positive signs. Um, who would have thought, you know, doing a month of just quads? Is it a month? I think it's been a month now uh, of just chasing quads. Really hammering the hack squat and uh, hammering hammering all the other muscle groups as well. Like basically bro splitting it up, you know, doing all of it. Push, pull, upper, lower, all that stuff. Um, you know, I've gained my weight back as well. So I'm not four or five kilos lighter than pre-sickness so I'm feeling strong I'm feeling back to my form formal uh former self uh it's warming up and dare I say I have been thinking about going back to AMRAPs um but uh I will entertain and continue the hack squats um you know if I if I go back to AMRAPing twice a week or even once a week then a lot of this stuff that I'm doing is going to go out of the window because man AMRAPing AMRAPing uh squats is it's freaking taxing, man. It is really, really taxing. And so for that to happen, I would basically need to put a stop to everything. You know, the back training, the the chest, the, the legs, the, you know, right now I'm doing two dedicated uh, leg days, if you will, on top of the squat every day, which is the posterior chain and then the interior chain, which is the hex squats. So that's, uh, all of that needs to go out of the window. Like I need to recover between MRAP sets. And so even though I'm thinking about it, um, because I'm feeling good, because I'm, um, I feel like I've made some progress and I really would like to, uh, realize that, uh, progress. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if I could get 180 for 20, but I could definitely try and get 180 for 15. I mean, uh, when I stopped pushing the AMRAPs, I stopped at 13. So, I mean, I would probably have to, you know, pick back up. I doubt I can get 180 for 10 day one, uh, you know, but if I can get like, you know, six, seven, eight first session and then the body starts to acclimatize to that type of stress and then eventually you you can, you know, overreach the previous best. Um, but that's always the anxiety. I spoke about this in the past. There's always an anxiety about, you know, wanting to be peaked out and wanting to realize where you're at right now. But, you know, it's like in science, man, you know, um, 
you know, if you know anything about physics, which I don't, I'm not going to pretend I do, but like if you listen to the experts, they talk about the act of measuring actually distorts the result. You know, when you're looking at like physics and, you know, when they look it out into the space and you know, the tiny things and atoms and all that stuff, the actual act of using an instrument to measure something actually distorts the very thing you're trying to measure because you're uh, disrupting the environment in which that thing lies in. So in a similar way to like that super hard, hardcore physics and maths and, and science, in a way for us to measure our progress right now, we need to disrupt what we're doing. Uh, you cannot be, you know, carrying fatigue like a maniac, chasing bodybuilding parameters and also, you know, midweek just throwing a one rep max and expect that to be a solid representation of where you are. That's not the case. Um, but, you know, there's that anxiety that we always need affirmation that uh, we're heading in the right direction. But uh, luckily for us, there's other there's other things we can look at to see whether we're heading in the right direction. And, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about this and I really agree that if you improve whatever the hell you're, you're trying to improve, you are better. So if I get to five plates on the hack squat, I am better in some way, shape or form. I am better. Um, if you improve your barbell row, you are better. You know, if you do sets of 10 with a barbell row with 100 kilos and you get to 120 for a set of 10, dude, you are better. You don't necessarily need to have the squat, competition squat, bench and deadlift um, for the feeling of, yeah, I've, I've improved. And that's kind of, you know, it's been a tough sell for me, uh, but I've, I've, I've finally come around to it. Um, the only reason I tried 190 today was because it felt good. It felt really, really good. I failed it, but I'm pretty sure like, you know, if I was to peaking right now that 180 would have been mine um but that doesn't matter you know the rest of the session is back um because i'm training at home because you know uh, there's work to be done today um i'm not gonna do the full you know three or four exercises at home i'm just gonna do these dumbbell rows um which are great which are really really great but uh you need to be mindful of them like i've said in the past that they have caused a fair few sports hernias um, I don't understand the mechanism of it, but um, luckily for me, tomorrow I'm training core. I'm going to do heavy, heavy sit-ups again. And so the fact that I'm doing lots and lots of core uh, makes me comfortable in doing this because in the absence of doing a direct day of core or direct core training, you know, if you do a few sessions of these rows, you, I, I mean, at least me, I start to feel a little bit funny in my, uh, in my groin Uh inguinal hernias tend to arise um, or threaten me when I do these twisty freaking pulling motions. Interestingly enough, though, I didn't feel any sensation at all when I was doing the cable rows. Uh, they felt really, really good. For some reason, these dumbbells, I don't know if, it, it's, if, if it's because I'm bracing with the, with the top hand. Um, I don't know if that's causing it, whether, whether it's like a prolonged plank that puts pressure onto the onto the body in some weird way. I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, I'll, I'll keep at it. Keep keep uh, keep my, as they say, fingers on the pulse. Um, if it starts to feel crappy, I'll stop. If, if it doesn't, I'll keep going and continue hitting the, the abs and the core and all that stuff. And hopefully it's going to hold up together. Uh, but yeah, very, very uh, happy. I, I, I was kind of excited when I walked up to 190 that I was going to sit here and tell you guys that I hit a PR. But uh, it didn't happen today, unfortunately. But um, I like the signs. Who would have thought more quads means better front squatting? Um, seems as though that these front squats are carrying over. Uh, I'm feeling very stacked and very strong, which is a very good feeling, I must say. I know there's been a lot of talk about hack squats don't translate. They seem to be translating to me. Maybe if you're a low bar squatter, they will translate less. But for me, a high bar squatter, the way I squat, I think hack, hack squats are a very, very good accessory. So the signs so far telling me, but we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it progresses. Appreciate you guys like always, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.